The belief in a higher being has been intricately linked with humans for as long as civilization has existed. Humans believed in various deities throughout the course of history, starting from the monotheistic religions that we now have today to the polytheistic ones, there is a staggering number of religious organizations around the world, with some dating as far back as thousands of years. While they are now generally regarded as myths, godly figures such as Zeus, Odin, and Marduk were once highly revered deities in their respective pantheons. But when did humans begin worshiping deities, and where? And more interestingly, who was the oldest god in written history? The oldest gods. As murky as the origins of civilization were, it's equally challenging to determine the first god worshipped by humans. Depending on who you ask and what they think constitutes a god, answers can also vary. But we do have quite a few good candidates for the title of the earliest gods worshipped in history, with the last deity being quite possibly the oldest one. Yahweh Believed to have been founded in 1800 BCE when Abraham established a covenant with God and received the Torah, Judaism is one of the oldest existing religions in the world. Tradition holds that Yahweh is the all-knowing, eternally benevolent, and almighty God. Interestingly, however, Yahweh's origins in history were debated. According to some scholars, his worship could be traced all the way back to the late Bronze Age, or at least early Iron Age, when he was an ancient Levantine deity with roles traditionally ascribed to war and storm gods. Ancient Israelites believed in a pantheon of Canaanite deities, including El, Baal, and Asherah. Over time, El was conflated with Yahweh, and as Judaism developed, so did the veneration of Yahweh as the one and only God. Judaism grew to be one of the largest monotheistic religions in the world, subsequently influencing Christianity and Islam. Ahura Mazda Judaism isn't the only religion that heavily influenced Islam and Christianity. Even before Christianity and Islam were established, and possibly Judaism as well, Zoroastrianism was already a known monotheistic religion in the 6th century BCE, with roots going as far back as the second millennium. Regarded as one of the oldest and surviving monotheistic religions, arguably after the short-lived Atenism in Egypt, Zoroastrianism was founded by the prophet Zoroaster. In a world dominated by polytheistic religions, Zoroastrianism was quite unique in many ways. Believing in a central, absolute, and benevolent supreme being called Ahura Mazda, Zoroastrianism was probably among the first religions to establish a rule in which following this benevolent god would help them avoid eternal damnation. In the case of Zoroastrianism, evil is personified by Angra Mainyu and his demons. They were also one of the first religions to not just introduce the concept of heaven, hell, angels and demons, but the process of judgment after death. As one of the earliest solidified and large religions that believed in a single benevolent deity, Ahura Mazda was certainly among the oldest gods in his category. Indra Speaking of the oldest religions in the world, Hinduism might just be the one to bag the title of the oldest religion in the world. While it's true that since prehistoric times, humans have had some form of faith or belief in a greater power. Hinduism is by far the only one among these that has an unbroken tradition and continuity of religious practice over thousands of years. It's unclear when exactly was Hinduism founded, but most scholars believe it started between 2300 to 1500 BC in the form of Vedic religion, which served as its predecessor. The name Vedic was taken from the Vedas, a collection of sacred texts of hymns chanted during rituals and sacrificial rites. These hymns praised a pantheon of gods, and among them was Indra. Indra was one of the oldest gods in written history, simply because he was already attested in Rigveda, the first of the four Vedas. A powerful and mighty thunder god, 
Indra was also one of the most significant deities in Vedic religion. While Agni, the fire god, was also mentioned in Rigveda, Indra was often described as the highest god in the early days of Hinduism. However, as time passed, his worship and significance also diminished, replaced in importance by gods like Vishnu, Shiva, and Devi. Shangdi. When talking about the oldest gods in existence, it's impossible not to include a deity from another cradle of civilization. Worshipped in China during the Shang and Zhou dynasties, Shangdi was an ancient deity who controlled everything from weather to the Feiti of the entire world. Shangdi literally means supreme deity and was the highest of all the gods, as well as the progenitor of humanity. While Shangdi was quite an important god in second millennium China, he was later on conflated with Tian, which is equivalent to heaven or greater whole. Despite his significance being largely diminished in the succeeding dynasties, some forms of his worship survived until now through scattered groups of Chinese folk religion believers and other communities. Shangdi is also used as a term for the Abrahamic God and in a more general sense pertaining to the highest power in the universe. Atom, Ra, Ta, and Min. Humanity's earliest civilizations were key players in developing religion, and as one of these cradles of civilization, Egypt was no different. Like how polytheistic religion developed in other places on Earth a few thousand years ago, Egypt also established its own system of beliefs. Among these many gods, Atom was one of the oldest. The primordial god of creation, Atom was believed to be the first deity from where everything else arose. At the beginning of time, Adam created himself, emerging from the waters of Nun. He created all the other gods in the world. Adam is often depicted wearing the double crown of Lower and Upper Egypt, symbolizing his divine and absolute authority over the entire land. Later on, Adam would be overshadowed by other gods who gained more prominence in the Egyptian pantheon, like Ra and Ta, creating composite deities like Adam Ra and Adam Ta. Then again, Adam is just one of the oldest gods in Egypt, worshipped as far back as the pre-dynastic era and in the Old Kingdom. Min was another ancient Egyptian deity whose cult originated in the 4th millennium BC, making him one of the oldest gods worshipped in the region. The god of fertility and harvest, Min might not have been the highest deity in the pantheon, but he was quite important. Inanna, Ishtar, Aphrodite, the fertility goddess. Fertility gods were big during the early days of human civilization, and why wouldn't they be? Civilization advanced largely thanks to the development of agriculture, and life revolved around it, especially in the earliest of days. However, in a world where humans were at the absolute mercy of the whims of unavoidable natural phenomena, men and women would turn to the gods for help. They need assistance not just in keeping drought at bay, but also making sure they conceive more than enough children to help with the field labor. And so the creation of harvest and fertility deities became inevitable. It's not surprising to see that in almost any polytheistic religions of the ancient world, there's always a deity or two whose primary role is to ensure that the earth is bountiful. Among these deities, Inanna is perhaps one of the oldest venerated goddess of fertility, whose worship dates as far back as Sumer, aka the oldest civilization known to mankind so far. However, she holds more roles than one, and very different ones too. Not only was she a fertility goddess, but she was also a war deity. She was also associated with love, sex, beauty, divine law, and political power. Inanna was also one of the most powerful Anunnakis. Inanna was often equated with Ishtar, a goddess worshipped later on by Akkadians, Babylonians, and Assyrians, who have more or less the same powers she has. To some extent, Inanna is also the equivalent of Aphrodite and Venus whom she shares similarities with. Whatever the case may be, 
Inanna was among the oldest established deities in written history. However, there is only one other deity that could outrank her, and he came from the same pantheon as the goddess. Anu. The highest god in the Sumerian pantheon, Anu was the sky god and the leader of the Anunnaki. He was the progenitor of gods and evil spirits. As the supreme deity of the skies, Anu was the only source of kingship, and through him, the rulers of the world were chosen. Anu was also the embodiment of the sky itself, the overarching sovereign of the world, covering all directions and beyond the reach of common mortals, maintaining order and justice among humans and gods alike. Despite his magnanimous status, Anu was quite distant as a deity. In fact, one could argue he may just be the personification of the heavens, as the word Anu means sky, literally. Still, he played quite remarkable roles in a small number of myths. One of the most important stories about him involves Inanna in the Epic of Gilgamesh. In the story, Inanna threatened Anu to unleash a horde of the undead unless Anu would hand him over the Bull of Heaven, which she sent to Gilgamesh, because he spurned her advances. The slaying of the Bull of Heaven was an important scene in the epic. Another story involving Anu was when he summoned Adapa, a priest of Enki or Ea, for breaking the south wind's wings. Enki advised Adapa not to receive any food or drink offered to him by Anu, because it would cause him death. As such, Adapa refused everything offered to him, from clothes to food. When Anu questions him about his misdeeds against the south wind, Adapa reasons that while he was fishing for Enki, the south wind caused a storm and sunk his boat. In anger, Adapa broke his wings. This somewhat calmed Anu down, and the latter decided to let it go, so he offered him food and drink. However, following Enki's advice, Adapa still refused it. It turns out, the food and water Anu offered him would grant him immortality. Because of his refusal to eat the food and drink the water of immortality, humans would have to suffer illness and death. Adapa was sent back to Earth. If this myth sounds familiar to you, it's because it's quite similar to the Adam and Eve story from the Bible. Like Adam and Eve, Adapa was created by a god, in this case, Enki. It was also because of his refusal to follow Anu's instructions that he was unable to receive eternal life and suffer death as a consequence, albeit he did it on the advice of Enki. Then Adapa was sent back to Earth, much like how Adam and Eve were driven out of Eden. The story of Adapa isn't the only familiar story we can find in Sumerian myths. Before Genesis was written down, the tablets from Mesopotamia already had a version of the flood story, with almost the same sequence of events. The gods created humans, the humans turned evil, the gods decided to end humanity through a flood. A human was chosen by God, or a god, that is, Enki, in the case of Sumerian myths to be saved, and the deity decided to make peace with humanity. It's evident how Anu and the whole Sumerian pantheon influenced later ancient religions. Remember how Inanna became the basis of Ishtar, then possibly Aphrodite and Venus as well? Anu was quite similar. He was often equated with other sky gods, particularly Zeus and Uranus. Like Zeus, he was the king of the gods. However, he might have more in common with Uranus, in the sense that both deities were personifications of the sky and the former rulers of all deities. In one Hurrian myth in particular, Anu was the most powerful god until he was defeated by Kumarbi by way of, that's right, cutting off his genitals. But wait, that's not the only similarity. Because from the dismembered genital rose another deity, this time, however, he wasn't a goddess of unbelievable beauty that could captivate mortals and immortals alike. He was the god Teshub, born from the genitals swallowed by Kumarbi, who became impregnated as a result. Kumarbi tried to devour his children, including Teshub, but the fate goddesses gave him a stone substitute. And, very much like the Greek version, Kumarbi was eventually deposed in turn, and Teshub the weather god, took over. 
While the biblical stories and Greek versions were undoubtedly more popular, the Mesopotamian myths were arguably written way before the former were recorded. Is there a god older than Anu? Sumerian civilization is considered to be the oldest in history, making Anu arguably the oldest god in written history. However, as more archaeological discoveries get uncovered, this may also change too. The discovery of Gobeklil Tepe, one of the earliest places of worship in history, might just be the beginning of reshaping our understanding of the ancient world. But the fact that Gobeklil Tepe left no written records that we know of, we couldn't possibly know what kind of deity they worshipped in that place, or if there was any at all. Then, there was also the enigmatic Venus of Willendorf statue. Estimated to have been made around 2,9500 years ago, the Venus of Willendorf is a statue of a nude woman with exaggerated sexual features. Some scholars believe that it wasn't just any work of art from prehistoric times, but rather a statue of a mother goddess. In other words, might just be the very first deity, or a form of it. Still, Anu and the pantheon he belonged to had a tremendous impact on the world at large. The Sumerians who worshipped them ushered human civilization into a new era and helped speed up humanity's advancement. So, by definition, he was the oldest god in written history whose impact can be felt until today. Some scholars believed the Mesopotamian myths and religious system might have influenced surrounding civilizations as well, as they also started to flourish later on. In turn, these ancient forms of belief helped form the basis of religions that still exist to this day. The belief in a sky god and all the other gods below him may have inspired later religions to ascribe gods of the highest power to the heavens. And whether we'd like to admit it or not, both ancient mythology and religion shaped the world we know today. Every day we still see the influences that the past has bestowed on us. Many modern brands name themselves after mythological deities. The giant shoe brand, Nike, the bag of the rich and famous, Hermes, the household name of cameras, Olympus, Titans of Jewelry, Pandora, and quite possibly the biggest online retail store there is, Amazon, a name which is also used for the largest rainforest in the world. Humans first landed on the moon via a vehicle named after the deities like Apollo and Artemis. Other countries even followed suit in naming their most prized space shuttles after mythological figures, such as China's Chang'e, named after a moon goddess. Even our planets were named after Roman deities, and the very calendar we use had ancient touch as well. The religions we are quite familiar with today grew out of ancient polytheistic faiths, especially Mesopotamia. While it had its great share of bloody history, religion also influenced many aspects of our lives, from society to culture to politics. We can see it in the arts, literature, legal systems, education, and architecture as well. So, what else did we inherit everything from them? Virtually everything. While many of us don't believe in these gods anymore, we can't deny the fact that their believers helped shape the world we live in. It was through the lens of these ancient beliefs that the early people sought their place in the universe and built a world around it, which in turn also helped us find our own. Deepen your adventure by watching our playlists. And if you want more, just play the next episode that comes up as a suggestion on your left.